All right, so what I'm gonna do in this example today is talk about how to use Excel in a way to help you manage your data for a research experiment. Um, and this is a particular example that a student has is working on, but I think it might apply to people who do any type of repeated measures where your data is gonna be in the same data set. So um, just to give you a little example, what's going on is their um, research lab studies body image and so they have people do an ecological momentary assessment. So they're testing people across multiple days, multiple times. So it's five days, five times a day. Um, but they give everybody sort of a practice day and they want them to respond a certain number of times. So we're checking like percent response. We're trying to see how many times did they actually respond and be able to calculate those numbers. Um, there's probably a more elegant way to do this, but there's a simple way with Excel. So um, what I've done is taken her data um, and de-identified it. So um, this in the real data set has names in it. So I just took those out and made them participant numbers and downloaded the columns that were when the participant started, when they ended, which I'm not gonna use, if they finished, um, which is just uh, Qualtrics's code till they got to the end, and then their name. So none of the rest of the data here, because this is really just a compliance rate. Um, now I'm gonna leave these four columns as they are, not delete them, so that next week when we have more data, we can just tack it on to the end of the data set here, um, as opposed to um, starting this whole process over again. Okay, so these are the four columns that you get in Qualtrics in almost every study you do. Um, so the first issue really is that I have um, clearly sorted this by participant to give them numbers. So let me show you how it looks when you download the data. So it'll be by start date. And so they'll be all jumbled up. Um, and we'll be looking at different participants across different time periods, especially if you run this sort of study in a continuous manner where people start on different days, that sort of thing. Um, and so what I really wanna do is create a, a map of the date and the time, and then how many times each person was in those dates and times. This will also allow me to find times where they submitted something twice, they hit submit twice, um, because that's problematic in your data set as well. So what I wanna do is I wanna separate out the um, date and time column here, otherwise I get those two combined, and I want them as separate things, and you'll see why in a minute. So I'm gonna highlight this first column, I'm gonna click data, Okay, this should work the same on um, Excel for Windows. And then I click text to columns. Text to columns allows you to separate columns out to have the same sorts of information in them. Um, delimited would work, but it's gonna overwrite a column here. So if I click delimited, hit next, hit space, that's gonna make me three new columns, which I have space for, so I could say finish. Do I wanna replace? Yep. And so now I have the start date um, which includes the time out here because of the way it's been formatted in Excel, but that's okay. Um, the time that they took the study, um, and then the AM PM marker uh, out here, which is fine. If you didn't want to do that, um, let's say you had a reason why 9 AM and 9 PM should not count as the same time, um, or you have people that might take it at 9 p.m. and you're like, no, I wanna keep that with me. What you can do is instead click text to columns, this time do fixed width. And since all of our data lines up nice and evenly, um, we could do this one as well, hit finish. And that will keep the AM PM markers with it. Um, <clears throat> now, for me, that didn't matter so much because I'm gonna have to recode this in a second anyway but both ways are acceptable. <clears throat> um, so the, the inherent problem here is that I have what day they started, great, and I have what time, but the times are all different. Um, <clears throat> and so let me show you where I'm going with this, which is pivot tables, and then you'll see why this time code thing isn't gonna work. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna highlight everything and make myself a pivot table. Okay. Pivot tables are normally under data, so it's this option, pivot table. Um, that automatically created me a new sheet with the data. Uh, in Windows, it asks you where you want to stick it, so you can stick it in a new sheet. It gives me this pivot table builder. So it's essentially a report builder. Um, 
And these are really great if you're trying to summarize a bunch of different data. Um, so what I want to do is have what day they took the study, um, what time they took the study, and then a count of the number of times that their name appeared. So essentially I want to see that they took the study five times in one day across the five time periods and nothing overlapped. So this kind of set itself up nice and pretty for me, but you can move them around. I could put this as row labels so you could see all the different time periods. I could um, do whether or not they finished down here. So uh, I'm going to leave it like this. So I put the start date as my um, rows so I can look at it by day. You could also look at it by participant. Um, and look at, you can drag these into multiple columns, so I could do a count of how often they appeared. Um, but given that I know the student is doing this study by day, I'm going to stick with day here. <clears throat> uh, you can also change what type of formula you want out here. So I can click on this and get averages or um, standard deviations or variances, but I know I want it to be a count because I'm just literally trying to keep track of hundreds of participants. So you can close this, it's this builder thing over here. So here's why those time codes aren't gonna work. Look at how many different ones there are and that's very confusing. So instead what I wanna do is just simply code the times. So let's code sort by time here. And their study has um, five different time periods throughout the day that they ask people to do um, their survey. So I know this last one is five, um, and this is going to look funny here for a second until I recode it as a number column. So this is time point five always. Oops, that did not do what I expected it to do. <clears throat> that did a fill instead of copy. There we go. Um, and then I know everything up till 10 a.m. is sort of time one. And this honestly would be better done by this person who knows what's going on. I think 11.30 is probably going to be time two. You know, and if you miscalculate, you can just re-import the data and do it again. 1.30 is going to be time three, maybe. So let's do this till two o'clock. And I'll let her correct me later. Let's just make this time four. Okay. So that sort of coding you're going to have to just know. All right, I'm going to change this to a number so I can actually see the numbers. There we go. So there's one through five. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and then now this pivot table is going to make a lot more sense. So I'm going to go back over to my pivot table. And it didn't refresh. So they're not automatic refreshers. So I click on it. Um, and then you click refresh here, just click refresh all. It's going to realize that it's got different columns now. Um, and so I can see that now I have the number of people for each day who responded at each time point. Still not quite what I want. So click, I'm going to click builder and I want to separate this out by participant too. So now I have for each day, each participant, the number of times they have responded. Right, so here is, it looks like each participant on this particular day only did um, time three and five. Um, and this up here is a total of that day. So I could completely actually take out the date as well and just have each participant and how many times they responded. That works as two. Um, but if you're testing them across multiple days, it seems to me like you want, might want the day. But you can also switch out and look at participants by day as well. So you can kind of play with the table depending on how you want it to look. Do you want participants to be the main concern? So let me look at their uh, response rates by day. Or do you want the day to be the main concern? Um, and those may be interchangeable depending on how you're doing your study. Uh, and so that'll let me look at like how often they've been responding across all these different days. Now remember when you do this, this, this line here is the total for that particular participant and then it's broken down by day within each one. And you've got grand totals out here, which you could calculate percents for. So the grand total for this participant um, is 
let's say there's 25 time points, right? They've only responded to 8%. But well, within this particular day, there's five time points. So it would just depend on what your denominator should be in that example. So kind of an easy way to convince Excel to help you keep track of a repeated, a very long repeated measure study, not long, but like a continuous repeated measure study um, so that if you're offering incentives for participants, you know who to offer them to, or if you're trying to remind participants, hey, take the study, um, you could see which ones haven't completed it.